You hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence keeps this blog ad-free. <laughs> Hello folks, welcome to Inkdependence.com. I'm Mike, and today we're taking a look at this ink, which is Sailor Manio Haha. Ha. And this is actually sent to Audrey as a sample by one of her pen pals. So if you're watching this, Audrey's pen pal... Thanks, uh, because we've gotten to try, try this ink out, and it is very cool. So this is an ink whose name I was like, what is going on here? Because the Manio line is all about uh, colors and the hues that come in colors. They come in boxes like this, bottles thusly, uh, for about 18 19 bucks, uh, up to like 24 ish depending on where you get it, uh, but uh, usually discounted to around 19 And uh, it's 50 mils, so a fair amount of ink, actually. So I had to look up the haha -ha flower, and I found an article from about the Hawaiian forest and on Oahu, they have these plants that are called a Cyania grimsana. And I guess they must grow in Japan as well, or a Japanese company probably wouldn't have picked this very strange plant, which has these weird sort of like fingery trumpet looking uh, flowers I encourage you to look up. I'll have a link in the description to this article so you can look at them. The, the plant itself is very strange. I kind of think it's awesome. Uh, but that flower is multi-hued and so is this ink. So this is what this ink looks like on Rhodia's 80 grams per square meter paper, which is uh, uh, fairly well coated, so it doesn't it's not terribly absorbent or anything like that. It does have a little bit of a, a longer dry time as a result, but I've been using Rhodia for my review paper forever because it's so... Um, uh, it's very good, I think, and it's also approachable, so people probably have it. But uh, this ink does work better, I think, on a coated paper like this, or even like a Tomoe River or something, as we'll see in a little bit, uh, because it doesn't soak in as much. It gives it time to develop these hues, because when you write with this ink, it actually comes down, uh, goes down on the page very light. I've had it in this pen, which is a Twisby Eco. This is actually Audrey's pen. I inked it up for her, and I never, I just never, I just kind of kept it, because I was going to do this review. Uh, and... Uh, in the, in the pen, I'm like, mm, I don't know. For a while, I, I sort of avoided this ink because I knew it was going to be too light and I wasn't really going to like it. Because when you write with it, let me do a little scribble. You know, these little guys. It goes down pretty light, but it actually does darken up over time, which is very nice. And then it develops these these hues. So you've got sort of a kind of a grayish tinge, you've got blues, you've got like this bright cyan, you've got like a purple in there, there's maybe like some teal. Like this is this is an interesting ink. And you see this sort of coloring even in the regular writing and not just in a swatch, which is really cool. It does take a minute to develop that sort of thing because it has to sort of dry and darken. You can see you've actually got some of this, this scribble up here. You can see it shifts color, which is I mean, darn, that's cool. <laughs> that's a really cool trick, Sailor Manio. Ha ha. Uh, I've been using it on this paper, and it is, of course, very good on Rhodia and on a bunch of other things. I uh, I sort of use I use a lot of papers, and it has performed pretty well on all those papers. So uh, the flow here, I say wet, but a little bit thin. I think it is kind of a wet-leaning ink. It's not super wet or anything like that, but I think it does lean that way a little bit. Um, has a little bit of minor bleed on the 20-pound. So this is the 20 pound paper. This is Staples 20 pound, 30% recycled copy paper. It's pretty much the junkiest junk you'll find in your office copier. Uh, and it does have a little bit of spreading, has a little bit of uh, feathering here and there. Not too much, just a little bit. I kind of blame the paper for that, honestly. Uh, but in terms of uh, bleed, barely any. You see like a little bit here. My camera's having trouble focusing on it even. So little bits of bleed, but nothing really to write home about. So that's pretty good for this uh, terrible paper. On other papers, of course, it performs better. Um, and as I say here, man, this is a strange ink. And I'm glad I put it in a, uh, a broad nib because I think it really needs that, run that room to run. You want to put down a bunch of this ink and you want to give it some time to dry uh, as I showed up there. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the, the water drop test right quick. Then we'll look at the chromatography, show it next to a bunch of other inks that are, I mean, at least have something in common with it because this is a weird ink and uh, that'll be it. All right, so let's get some uh, water in this guy. Try not to splash water everywhere. Eh, come on. No, oh, there we go. There's your syringe. It was just sitting here. It kind of you know, locks up. All right, there we go. So plenty of water there. Let's give it a little, give it a swish. I'm not really expecting any water resistance, but there might be some. You never know with these inks. Uh, and it doesn't look like there's any blue swirling around, although you do see that there's a considerable lightning there in the, the grid, I think. Soak that up. Get another corner. Get it on the desk. 
very efficient at getting water everywhere. Good job, Mike. And uh, yeah, they're actually like, there's some left. There's no, um, I, I don't know, there's not a whole lot left. But there's a little bit, there's more than I expected. You can still read water test. You can still see where the grid was, but I'm not gonna say it's water resistant. I think it's just too light for that. So any amount of ink that leaves is kind of, is kind of detrimental to it. Okay, so here is the chromatography for this ink. As you can see, there is some left down at the bottom. You have these sort of purples and pinks here in the middle, the cyan band across the top. It's all kind of a light blue turquoisey sort of color. Uh, but I think it, I think it, it's pretty cool. This is a cool ink. And I imagine there are going to be lots of art uses for this one too. And, uh, and not just general writing because I think you can do some writing with this ink. It is definitely legible and, uh, and I kind of dig it. So like, I don't know how you make an ink that has all these colors and they all actually show up in the ink when it dries, but good job. Okay, let's take a look at it on a couple of other papers. This is my, my, uh, inky fingers currently inked notebook. And here it is right here. Uh, and uh, it looks pretty good here, actually. You can see a lot of those like pinky purple notes in the writing itself, which I think is neat. You want to have those show up there. Uh, and of course, no bleeding or feathering or any of that nonsense. It doesn't do that on wheat straw paper. Almost nothing does. So it works really well on here. Now, Tomoe River, as I have in this ink journal, uh, is, uh, is right here. And I think it looks even better on here because uh, it sits on top and it gives it time to dry a bit without soaking in. And so you get more extreme uh, like chunks of that color. So you get a little purple pink in here in the middle of some letters. It's a, it's a darn cool ink. And people who see this can be like, what in the world are you writing with? And they're going to like it because, I mean, that's dope. All right. And I'm on record as being a pale ink hater. So if I like it, I think a lot of people will. All right. Let's look at it next to a bunch of other inks. Um, so first off, let's look at it next to um, this one, which I think is like not quite. It's definitely darker and more legible, I believe. This is Sailor's uh, Yuki Akari, uh, which I think is a very nice uh, sort of sky blue, a, a very light turquoisey sort of situation. I don't know. This is one of those colors where I'm not really sure how to describe it, but uh, it has some of the same little bits of color in it. You can see a little bit of purples, uh, that sort of thing. But uh, as I said, I think Manyohaha is uh, singular, so nothing's going to be exactly like it. Then, uh, let's see, we've got here uh, Sites Kruznak Arctic Blue. If I can get it out of the little sleeve. There we go. Which is, uh, again, much darker, more saturated, but it does have some of the same tones as I throw it in there, because why not? Uh, then we've got here, uh, what do I have? Oh, this is, uh, this really just for comparison because I think a lot of people have probably have this ink. This is Iris Shizuku's Konpeki, which I think probably everybody has, uh, used or, uh, seen before. And so this will give you an idea of what haha -ha looks like. Uh, it's not a similar color aside from being a light blue, but it's sort of a control sample, I suppose. Then, uh, here we have Twisby Sky Blue, which has some of the same, like, uh, shading bits like up in here and down in here, uh, I suppose. Although again, nothing's really all that close to ha ha. Then, uh, I threw this one in there because I wasn't really sure. I thought this was going to be closer than it was. So <laughs> Mr. Nose, don't get on my keyboard. <laughs> He'll shut the whole thing down. Um, but, uh, Sailor Manual, ha ha and Troublemaker Mil Milky Ocean, I thought would be closer, but it turns out that, um, come on, here we go that Milky Ocean leans much to in more into the purple area than HaHa -Ha does. Although you do have some of the like the same sort of violets and a little bit of turquoisey uh, bits in there. You still have the same, like a pretty similar array of colors just in a different, whoa, just in a different sort of um, uh, hue range. So uh, this one, not as close as I thought it was gonna be. And then, uh, oh, this is the same one. All right, that's it. Okay, so this has been Sailor Manio HaHa. -Ha which came in this little sample. Thank you to Audrey's pen pal. You can find this anywhere that you can buy uh, Sailor inks, I think. It's pretty widely available. Uh, and you see prices between 24 and uh, 19 bucks, really. So go check it out at uh, your Anderson pens, your Drum Ghouls, uh, your, uh, your Pen Chalets, your, uh, your, uh, your, all the places, your Gold Spots, uh, all that jazz. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Peace out.